Hello everybody, welcome. Um, one of the nice things about teaching is that um, invariably the person who's teaching also gets taught himself. And just recently um, I was doing some teaching and uh, one of one of the one of my students um, uh, shared something with me that I'd never even heard of, and so of course I promptly went went out and bought the necessary bits and pieces that I needed uh, in order to um, carry out this experiment. I want to bring you in on this experiment right here, right now, and um, we can have a go together. Just having a look at what it is. It's always exciting isn't it when somebody shares something with you and it's a sort of it's totally new and uh, this was totally new to me I never heard of this this technique so what is this technique well um, it involves I uh, just hope that the camera there is going to be it involves shellac <laughs> I wasn't quite exactly sure what shellac was. It is in fact the secretion of a beetle um, which I believe consumes the resin of a certain tree and and then it, it, it produces it produces some sort of secretion itself and that's what shellac is anyway. Um, I've got a, a few pots here and I just thought we would have a play. So, I've already given it a bit of a shake up. So, here it is. Kind of smells not too bad. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, the, the idea is, is to apply the shellac to a dry pot. So I've got I've got a dry pot here. This is actually made out of raku. So what I'm going to do is centre him up like that. Now I found it better best to apply this with a sponge. And I've done a bit of playing around with some other pieces, but. And you have to keep your decoration rather simple, because the uh, because the shellac tends to can bleed out. So what I want to do is just in a fairly loose, random way, I'm just applying this this shellac here to the, the side of this pot. The other thing is, it, it, you'll notice it does it does tend to, to to run a bit, but that's okay. You have to learn to sort of learn to make it work for you, if you know what I mean. The it's it's you know the characteristics are such that you have to. Oops. Um, Try and get it working for you on your side. The fact that it can run a little bit, well... Okay, now you can see what I've done there. Now, you could actually get with a, a brush and you can actually brush, brush that on. Um, you do though need to just zoom in a little bit there you can just perhaps get a bit more detail there what I've just done um, I've just as you can see just put that on with a bit of sponge and it's banded but it kind of goes wavy like that so you're probably asking yourselves well okay so what's this all in aid of all this 
what you're talking about putting the shellac on well you have to bear with me because I'm actually experimenting here this is you have to now leave this a little while just to uh, dry off maybe 10 or 15 minutes well it just so happens that I've got one here that I did before so what we're going to do now is whoops the idea is I should have a nice bowl of warm water here but I haven't so I'm going to, I'm going to use my I think probably be a good idea if we put the lid on the shellac. What I was going to say was that if you do brush it on you need to clean your brushes out with ammonia or you can use denatured alcohol apparently. Anyway this is one that was done before. I'm now going to rub over where the I painted it over with a shellac You just have to be a bit patient at this stage when you rub over. And you might be asking yourself, well, what's, what's it all in aid of? Just rubbing it over, so what does that do? Well... By rubbing it over, you see, the clay is washed away. But where you have the shellac, it resists the washing. What I'm doing here with the sponge, it resists it and stands up proud in a relief. Be a bit of fun, wouldn't it, to see how it comes out like. It probably would actually look quite good if it had a um, a, a glaze over it, say something like a, a temiku or something like that, which is a, a glaze we use in cone 10 in, in, redu in reduction. Um, now I can already begin, you probably can't see that, but it's it's washing it away between and I'm getting quite a nice little edge here um, developing where the shellac is it's so, so you have to be a bit patient when you do this dee, dee, dee. And you can get this shellac in either clear or amber and this is the amber one I thought well I'll see it a bit better and it's true you do see this nice amber color and that's exactly where you paint it is where it's going to be raised up yeah Now this is a kind of sponge that's got a rough bit on the other side and I wonder if I if I use that side it whether it'll kind of rub it away more effectively. Don't want to rub the shellac away there. Spray on the pot directly. I think that is actually this. The, the, the this is one of those um, scrubbers for doing the dishes, isn't it? Well, I think the green on the other side actually rubs the clay away a bit better. Now, when you're doing this, it does. Um, help if your clay 
doesn't have a lot of grit or grog in it or sand but it's fairly smooth you get a better get a better effect so be a bit patient can't show you what it's like when it's fired because I haven't I haven't got around to doing one yet at this stage it's kind of messy because it's smeared over but oh yeah I can feel the, the definitely feel the the pattern there And of course you just fire this now in the kiln and the shellac just burns away so you then get the raised pattern in clay standing up. I think you have to use it a little bit in, a, in an abstract way you know when you're when you're when you're doing the the decoration and not try to be too too fine perhaps okay I'm, I'm gonna I maybe could go on a bit here again trying to get a bit more off but I, w I don't want to drag on with this I'm, I'm now gonna just clean out that oh, actually maybe I'll use this sponge excuse me Bear in mind that you know you're adding water to raw clay, it it can make the clay weak, you know, can cause it to possibly break if you try and apply too much pressure to it, you know. Okay. Well, you may not be able to see that, but that is definitely got a, a, a pattern, a, a raised pattern there. Anyway, I encourage you to have a go. Another another thought that I had was, and that was, I wonder if this shellac could have some sort of application to put onto 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 biscuit a biscuited pot. This is an old biscuited pot here with a a chip out of it as you can see but I, I I just wondered to myself I wonder if it would resist the I haven't got any glaze here that I can dip this in at the moment so I'm just going to squirt some glaze over it just to see if it um, just to see if it in fact works or not it may not I was I was thinking it might it might resist the the glaze I'm pouring over it a bit better than that, but it, it, it no nah. oh I don't know yeah hmm no I don't think it works quite in the, as well as wax would do and in actual fact so. There we are, see, you live and learn. You have to experiment, do you? Don't you? And do a bit of that kind of thing. Anyway, um, there's that little number. Anyway, I encourage you, encourage you to have a go and um, 
maybe you have uh, better results than what I do. Anyway, we're all practicing, aren't we? <laughs> See you around. Bye bye.